Hello and welcome back to another one of your 3ds Max tutorials. So I'm going to touch back on some um, dynamic objects which will move when they're bound to another object and we're going to also have a, a little introduction to animating. I think it's important to put it in, in, in this, uh, at this stage of, of the tutorials um, as you, you will find it useful throughout the next couple of tutorials and uh, very useful when modeling and um, creating scenes in general. So let's get started. I'm just going to go over to my standard primitives. I'm going to click on sphere and I'm just going to draw a sphere with the pivot to the center. Then I'm just going to uh, copy that guy. I'm just going to clone him by holding shift and pressing up and I'm just going to leave him as a copy and uh, not an instance. In this case it's fine. Okay, so we go back over here to our command panel, down to dynamic objects and we'll just draw a spring. I know I, I um, touched on this in the last tutorial, but I feel it's, it's an important aspect. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So to adjust some of the parameters for the actual spring itself, let me just um, zoom in on the entire viewport by pressing Alt and W. So here we have our spring. So you can see on the right hand side, we can adjust the diameter, the amount of turns, whether it runs counterclockwise or clockwise, the amount of segments, the diameter of the wire, if it's an actual round wire, we can have a rectangular shape or a, a D section shape. And um, also we can have a triangular shape by um, selecting rectangular or round wire and just giving it, or by selecting round wire and selecting three sides. So let me just let me just show you that. So we just go into rectangular, three sides, and now we have three sides to our to our spring. Okay, um, I'm just gonna put in a few more than that. I'm gonna put in 20. So it's nice round, nice and round. So that determined the segments around the diameter, around the circumference of the of the wire. And let me see, I'm going to add some more sections, just going to ramp this up a bit as well to give us a nice smooth transition along our spring. So we can adjust our diameter. Hold on now, back into modifier. We can adjust the diameter of our spring, like so. And we can adjust the, the amount of turns. Okay. What else? So yes, we have our diameter of our of the, the section itself, the wire itself, we can adjust that. So if you want a chunky wire or a very slim wire, if we go to rectangular wire, it's just four sides. And if we go to D section, it's straight on one side and round on the other. So let's just go back up to round wire. Okay, so we want to bind this wire. I'm going to actually reduce the scale of the, the diameter of the wire itself. So it looks more like a spring. Okay, back in here again. I'm going to click on Bound to Object Pivots. I'm going to pick my top object, which is the top sphere. And then I'm going to pick my bottom object, which is the bottom sphere. This can also be side to side or, um, or that, but it just, it just prompts you to look for a, uh, a top and bottom object. I'm going to increase the scale of each of these, just so that the spring is actually hidden within, within the, the, the ball itself. So now when I go to move either of these spheres, the spring will move with it. Okay, so that's that's the first part of this tutorial. I'm gonna press G to eliminate the grid. And, okay. So let's get into some of the fun stuff, some of the animations, which really helps us to, um, to really visualize our, our scene, but also it can be used when creating complex curves and complex shapes because we can stop the scene at any point and we can we can then save the file or save the object in that in that position in that position. Okay, so I'm just going to start off. I'm going to bring this this down like so. I'm going to show you what we have down below here. So this is our time frame along the way here, and it's by default it's set to 100 frames, and 30 frames pretty much takes one second. So we can adjust this down here. There's a little icon. And it says time configuration, a little square with a little clock beside it. And we can edit some of the parameters in here so we can go um, quarter of the speed or four times the speed or we can reverse it or we, it can, we can have a ping pong effect. Also, we can increase or reduce the number of frames. So 
and we can just reduce increase it to 200 or 300 or whatever we can increase the animation time which will then uh, essentially speed up or slow down the entire animation we're just going to leave it as default for now okay so you see beside this key this black key you have auto key and set key i suppose the simplest animation would be auto key so let's just click on that for a second now this is already started this is our, our the beginning of our scene so if we move this slide this uh, sliding bar let's just say to 15 let's take our initial ball we can hold just move it to a particular position and let's actually move it over a touch in fact let me undo that I mean, I'll do that entire scene. I'm going to start off with the spring, with the ball and the spring higher. We move it over to here. Okay, so this is our position. That's fine. Now let's click on the ball. Oh, sorry, let's move our position. Let's say to 20 frames. Click on the ball. And then let's move it back down to this original position. That's fine. You can see now we have two keys that have been set along our, our time frame bar. So let's move this again, let's say to 40, just, let's just keep it even, and we'll spring it over to the far side as if, as if the spring is actually in action, as if it would in, in real life. So let's go back over again, let's say to 60, I'm going to click on this sphere this time, I'm going to bring this one up to meet it, and then I'm going to go just to 80, and I'm going to spring bring this sphere down and one more I'm just going to go to say 95 and then I'm going to bring this one back down to this position like so and let's leave it at that so now if we press press play we have this springing action as if it's as if it's in motion and like I say we can then pause it and then we can keep that as we wish we can go by frame, we can skip it, you can see there's the play button, then we can go to next frame, or we can go to end of frame, beginning of frame, I've just, I've just moved, moved the view, so I'm just going to play it once more, like so, I know it may not be realistic, it's just, it's just a bit of fun, just to show you the actual uh, dynamics of animations, and we pause it there. And now if we wanted to speed that up, we can go into our time configuration, we can go a quarter of the speed, let's press OK, and press play, and you can see it really slows, that, slows it down. So I'm going to pause it once more, and then we're going to go to four times the speed, I'm going to press OK. So it's a lot, lot quicker as, as you can see. Additionally, you can go to your time configuration, and you can set your end time to 50, Press OK and press play and essentially that's after speeding things up. I'm going to move this configuration back down to real time by one. OK. And you can see it's actually slowed it right down again. Like so. OK, so I'm going to go back to 100, 100 frames. I'm going to click on both of my objects and I'm just going to delete these little animation frames. I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to turn off auto key and I'm going to select set key. And just very quickly I'm just going to show you the same, the same idea. So I'm just going to click on the ball, I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to press the little key. The, the little black key itself, then I move it along, take the ball, move it up, set key, move it along a bit further, move it down, set key, and I'm going to take the second the, the second one, I'm just going to press control, uh, shift, and I'm going to move that guy over to say 65, and I'm going to take this other guy, move him over to 70, or 80 and then press play and then you can see it has the same motion okay so i'm going to leave it there for this tutorial and i'll see you in the next tutorial thank you